On this episode, we talk about vehicle reliability, including cars you just want to avoid. All of that's based on exclusive data from our members. Plus, we answer your questions, next on Talking Cars. Hi everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Talking Cars. I'm John Linko. I'm Jake Fisher. And I'm Jennifer Stockberg. And the three J's are here to talk about some of the most important data that we have. We share with you, and we share with, particularly with our members, reliability. Um, you know, it's, it's one of the things that is a key part of buying a car, and you don't want to have a car break down on a regular basis, being at the dealership, stuck on the side of the road. But, but Jen, tell us, we don't do reliability maybe like some other people. We go a little deeper. Right. So, so for, for me, and I hope for, for everybody, I consider reliability kind of that tertiary piece. You have the performance of the car, which we do on the track and, and get all of our numbers. The safety of the car, huge. And then ultimately, is it going to break down? Are you going to have trouble with it? And that's the piece that when somebody's owning it for a long time, that's a huge piece that matters. And that's what reliability brings to our overall score. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Jake, who do we, we, we I, I touched on it, but where do we get our reliability data from? Can you give the, the audience a little bit of information on that? Sure. And, and, and first of all, I mean, when it comes to reliability, I mean, I, I don't know if I agree it's even tertiary. I think it's primary. Yeah, because, maybe. I mean, you buy, all, there's, I mean, there's a lot of safe cars out there. There's a lot of cars that drive nice, but it's amazing how much of a difference we see in terms of reliability. Very much that's the big difference in cars uh, these days. So um, in terms of where we get it, we get it from our other members. Mm -hmm. We get it from our members. So we have survey data over of over f half a million vehicles. Um, we update that regularly. And... Um, you know, it's very interesting. You know, it's not about our cars. We Everyone knows, I mean, we purchase so we over 50 cars right. every year and we test them. It's right. not about our cars breaking down. And they down. break down and go to the dealer. And they do break down. <laughs> yes. It's amazing. I yes. mean, everyone's like, oh, you buy a new car. It's no problem. It's like, no. Ooh, we're going to touch on that after. But, so. um, People think it's our, our data, though. <clears throat> our data from the track. It's a bit right. of a misconception. It's yes. actually but not. But it's exactly. what people it's are telling season. us. Right. And we know what goes wrong with these cars. And 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 more importantly, it's it's how severe those issues too. I mean, really take that into account. So, I mean, I, I know there's other measures out there. There's inertial quality that people talk about. We're not talking about initial quality. Right. We don't care what it is in the first 90 days. Right. We care about the reliability, what it's doing down the road, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the second year. Well, you uh, know, and, and you were saying <clears throat> in, in some of our meetings about it, right. you know, manufacturers look at reliability one way, and then we look at severity. Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting. I mean, obviously, look at severity, too. But, um, you know, a lot of people ask me, it's like, well, what do the manufacturers, you know, say when you tell them the cars are reliability? Are they arguing with them? I'm like, yeah, for the most part, no. They're like, yeah, yeah we're aware of this because they have warranty information. Mm -hmm. So we're not telling them anything that they don't already right. know. But sometimes I was just recently talking to a certain manufacturer and they were like, well, you're saying our cars are less reliable, but our, um, what do they say, our, our warranty is, is down. Yeah, the volume. Which is which? Why I had to ask. I said, right. well, "What do you mean your warranty is down?" <laughs> yeah. Well, the amount of warranty complaints. Well, I'm like, well, do you count? You know, if you're a problem with the infotainment system or the door you know, handle doesn't pull all the well, time, or or you can't pair your phone. Is that the same as an engine replacement? They're like, yeah, each one is a warranty count. count. I'm like, oh, well, that explains <laughs> it because we don't do that at all. Right. Um, for us, if there's an engine problem, that is way more important than a phone not pairing or something mm -hmm. like that. Well, you know, I mean, some of that, we use it <clears throat> to predict our reliability, first of all. So we're giving you how the new car, the new model year, doesn't have to be a brand new car, but right. a new model, next model year will work. So we're talking about 2019s. Mm -hmm. And then later on this year, we also go back and we give you uh, the, the, warrant, the reliability information that for the past generations, in past years. Yeah, I mean, if you go online, you go to Consumer Reports online, you can certainly see all of that. I mean, we go back all the way back to 2000. I mean, we go back, we have rich data all there. But, but what we're talking about today is about the predictions. Exactly. And that's based right. on the, the past performance of the same if the vehicle that's in, a, a long, as long as it's still in that same generation. Right, yeah. right. Well, you know, like Jake said, we're going to talk <clears throat> about uh, predictions for, for the new cars. And what we're going to talk about, which is almost more interesting, is how the, the, the 10 worst vehicles... You know, or yes. some, some of our 10 worst vehicles, I should say. Because these are ones you can just knock off your list immediately. You know, and we have <laughs> more data. We have, we have a ton of data at ConsumerReports.org uh, for our members. So you should definitely go to CR.org, take a look at it, you know, even become a member for some of the detailed information. But we're going to kick it off with the least reliable car, uh, car, not in the survey, but the least reliable car, brand new Honda Clarity. Jake, it's, it's an all-new model. 
you know. Well, to a lot of people, that would be really surprising that the least reliable car, according to Consumer Reports, yep. is a Honda. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, obviously that's very confusing and strange because I know a lot of people buy Hondas and they tell me, I'm like, why did you buy a Honda? They're like, because Consumer Reports says they're good. Well, I'm like, check out the latest data. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, th this, this shows Always. a couple of things. One, it's a, it's, it's a new model. So, and often we see there's some growing pains with new models, especially right. when you put a new technology into those new there's models. A ton of it in that and car. And there's got a ton of new technology. But also it proves another point that don't just look by the brand. Don't say, I will buy a Honda and it'll be reliable. Right. I will buy, you know. I will avoid a Chevrolet or I will <clears> avoid a Kia because it's unreliable. Right, right. because they're very reliable models from those brands and sometimes uh, even a good brand gets one wrong. One that we, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, talking about the worst, and Jake brings up a good point, I think there was more insights in looking at the worst cars than there were actually from looking at the best cars. Well, sure. yeah, Some of so. these things like that, not every <clears throat> brand is, is bulletproof right. just because it's a Honda. Well, Some of that stuff is in these worst cars. It's just my, my kind of side Well, it's 100% right? it's true. It's 100% true because our, our members actually give us verbatims that, that we will share online, yep. and they tell us the problems. <clears throat> but if you have a yeah. great car, you know, you have the top performing you car in the survey, what does it say? Well, it all worked <laughs> well. I bought it because it didn't right. have a problem. Right. So right, 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 that, right. that's not as exciting as looking at the problems. Right. And the problems to look for if you happen to have one, you know, if you bought that first year model. Yep. Yep. You know, we, we talked about brands, Cadillac ATS, that's a, that's a least reliable luxury car. Least reliable, so yeah. But it's not new. <clears throat> no, it's not. And, and, and this is really unfortunate um, because it's a great car to drive. <laughs> and you talk about another kind of, insight. Well, yeah. and, and here's the thing, it's like you go and take, you yeah. know, you, you test drive an ATS and it's like, wow, what a solidly built vehicle. I mean, you drive it and it feels terrific. Mm -hmm. I mean, right up there with BMW, maybe even even better in yeah. terms of the way this car rides. The and dynamics. Handles, the dynamics. Stuff. And it's just so unfortunate that, you know, a car that really has so much appeal can't get the reliability right, right even down the road. Um, we, we've, we've, Talking it's about the reliability, yeah. it's been a couple of years. It's been problematic, and there's a lot of issues with that. I mean, the Q system has always been troublesome, <laughs> and there's other issues with the right. car too. Right. Its tertiary triangle fell off in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Right. Well, it's got those other good things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's safe. It's performs <clears throat> great. It just right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It would be recommended if it had good reliability. Right. right. Another model challenge to get correct. Yep. The least reliable SUV. Um, Tesla Model X. Yeah, yeah. Tesla Model X. So, so again, another point is that um, tons of technology, you know, another insight of the worst. Um, <clears throat> the Tesla continues to have some issues, both infotainment, some uh, hardware, yes, including the Falcon wing doors, yep. but even their automated soft close front doors. You know, so some of that stuff is still showing up mm -hmm. in the Tesla Model X. Yep. Um, and <clears throat> the other piece of that is it keeps changing. I mean, as you know, the Teslas keep <clears throat> They're not. They may look the same, but there's right. a lot of inside that's that's not the same. But a, a new model, least reliable minivan is the Honda Odyssey. Yeah. So, so I mean, we we, we touched on the clarity, but you know, right. any insights? Again, the Honda Insight. I mean, the Insight that <laughs> yes, it's yes, not yes. a reliable yes. Honda, the not the Insight okay, right? model. Um, but we'll a see. lot of new technology, <laughs> and we really liked the infotainment, the the interface, the DVDs, the great things for kids, the tested, power yeah. door. I mean, there was a lot of nice things. But those are some of those first year work out the kinks issue that are showing up for for the Odyssey. Right, so, from yeah. our, our members told us. Yep. Lots of headaches. Lots of headaches. But again, the, the, the pause on that again. Least reliable. Minivan, a Honda, right. Well, right? Worse than than the Chrysler, you know? And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we even have no. we have a story we did on ConsumerReports.org <laughs> up there, you know, looking at the three minivans, the Pacifica yeah. score as well, the Sienna, Toyota Sienna, yeah. well as well, Chrysler Pacifica, <clears throat> and, and the Odyssey. In some of the cases, you know, if it wasn't for reliability, the mm. Odyssey would probably be at the top of that category. Sure. And these things are cyclic because their model year <clears throat> launches are right, not always right. coincident. Yeah. So maybe the Pacifica had a few years to work some things out where now there's a new Odyssey. So yeah. it's looking better this year than the Odyssey does. In a couple of years, that can change. Exactly. Right? Or maybe there's a new Sienna that gets reduced and it falls off. So that sure. you kind of got to look at it <clears throat> year by year because there's, there's cyclic changes in there. Well, you know, and you, t you touched, touched, touched uh, on the Tesla <laughs> yep. with, with some of the changes and, and you know, Jake, I mean, why is Tesla scrutinized? I mean, everyone scrutinizes them in the media. And, you know, look, they, they, our survey data is on about 1,500 Model S's for all years in, our, in the survey. <laughs> they sell fewer Model S sedans in a month or in a year than GM sells Silverados in a month. So, you know, 
why is this such an important brand and vehicle? <clears throat> well, I mean, look, I mean, it shouldn't come to any surprise that sales don't necessarily translate <laughs> to interest. Yeah. I mean, look, you talk about the Matsos Model X. I mean, it's like a lot of the issues are some of the gimmicks on it. I mean, this is, right, right. we weren't big fans of the Tesla Model X because right. it's all these gimmicks that they put on top of that platform, right? right. That I mean, didn't necessarily make it better. Right, <laughs> but, yeah. but it's a double-edged sword because I mean, part of that, those gimmicks are probably part of the reasons why Deep everyone's deep. talking about it. Right, right. right? I, I mean, now there's a, we have Atari games now on our, right. on our Teslas now. <laughs> it, it points to something that there's this whole cool, cool aura yeah. from Elon Musk right down <clears> to the Atari. Oh, you know, I'm there's totally these driving neat it to things they do. Improve my, right. co my coolness. Um, but one of the things, <laughs> each generation looks the same. How's that working out? You know, but they're not actually the same. You know, you look at the Model S that we have. You know, we've had a couple Model S's. Aside from the weird right. mouth, you know, that kind of looks like tape over it now. <laughs> It, it, it's not the same so, as the old so, car. So the Tesla Model S, um, the reliability has changed on that as well. So the reliability in the Tesla Model S has now dropped below average. It was, it was um, so we're actually not recommending the Tesla Model S right. uh, at this point. And a lot of questions are like, well, how can you keep on changing your mind? Because it was recommended, it's not recommended. Like, no, the car is changing. And, right. and, and you're exactly right. It's like, you know, for a lot of people outwardly, it's the same car. Right. How could the reliability go on up and right. down? Well, well, they keep on changing the guts of the car. Right. Um, there's so many things. I mean, there's over-the-air updates. They're changing the um, the the autopilot system. They keep on right. changing some. They change the suppliers on it. Well, an optional versus standard <clears throat> systems. We we've seen you know the you know AEB you know automatic emergency braking come and go and come right. again. Right. Right. <laughs> um, but but specifically um, this year, uh, we're seeing a lot of issues with the. Uh, with the air suspension system. So this is a system that they, they've had before, but they actually, last year, um, they actually made it standard equipment. So they're producing a lot more of these systems with air suspension, and we saw a lot of issues with that. I mean, it wasn't stellar reliability before, but it seems like those air suspension problems were enough to kind it's of... Just enough, yeah, if it's average, it's just enough to knock them down. Right, right, right. right. Well, right. You know, and you can't get it without the air suspension, unfortunately. So. One, one quick thing on Tesla Model 3. We predicted it to come in as <clears> average, <throat> and it did. A couple reasons why. Well, the reasons why is about that complexity. So, I mean, we see, you know, again, it's the same story with the X, it's the same story with the S. When they start simple, I mean, when they first started selling the Tesla models, it was actually pretty simple. It was rear-wheel right. drive only. They didn't even have an autopilot. I mean, wow, it seems like the dark ages way back then. <laughs> but, but the car was actually, we recommended it off the bat because right. the reliability came in pretty good. But over the years, they keep on adding complexity. Yeah. They added all-wheel drive, which includes another motor system up right. front. They've added the air suspension. They've added... I mean, and you look at the Tesla Model X, they've added all these features. So when it came to the Tesla Model 3, right. we're like, well, they're only selling Rubo Drive. They aren't selling any air suspension. It's only available like one flavor. Yeah. Um, we looked at the history of Tesla Model S and we're like, hey, you know what? As a simpler. If it stays simple. If it right. stays simple. There's less to go wrong. And right. we actually have a fair amount of data from the Tesla Model 3 owners right now. Sure. And lo and behold, it's average. Right. And we are recommending the right. car going forward. As we know, for anyone who's following the news, <laughs> they're adding air suspension right. to it. Yeah. They're adding all-wheel drive to it. The complexity is um, coming in, in in order to. Atari kill the games more are now yeah. here, uh. so we'll see if it holds. But I think it's important to to reinforce what Jake said. That's not us changing. Right. That's that's the member data, data. changing. Yep. Right. We're changing right. as the data right. changes, so which is yep. now, as the car changes. And recommendations change based on that. Right. So, what can people use as as advice to buy? buying or leasing, what, what do they do, you know, using some of this knowledge as far as making their car choice? Right, so, and this reliability can absolutely change what you, how you want to buy, sure. not just what you want to buy. So if something's unreliable or, or low in reliability, as we've <clears> talked about on these models, it may be a choice between buying and leasing. If you're set with that car. Right, if, I if you have, have your heart set and you just know that's the car you want, um, maybe it's better to lease it mm -hmm. um, so that you don't get into the longer term reliability issues. Um, it's not typically financially the right decision, sure. but if you like, again, if you have your heart set. If it it's may, unreliable too, it's an opportunity cost. If you're going to the dealer constantly and, right. and so using a loan. Or your time is worth you, you, something. You gotta go in eyes wide open. You gotta right. understand what you're up against. It so gives you the so I mean, look, when my advice comes, it's like, you, you know what? 
say it's covered by 100% warranty and they pick it up, whatever, it's still a pain in the butt. Right. It yep. still is, no right. matter what is what's going on. What's your time on. worth versus what's your, time your money worth? worth? What's yeah. the aggravation worth? And you know, to a lot of people, avoiding that is worth a lot. However, you know what? If you want to buy a car because it looks cool and you want to drive it, as yeah. long as you know what you're up against, that's, go for it, and, and you may that's and you'll enjoy it too. Better too. Mm -hmm. If you know that, hey, I might have to go to the dealer a couple of times. Look, it may be a difference between buying an extended warranty. True. Maybe again, yep. it doesn't mm -hmm. take away the inconvenience. It doesn't take that into account. <clears throat> but you might but want to do that. It depends on, on what car the car's for too. Like right. if you're buying a Corvette and you're not commuting with it, but you're taking it to the track every once in a while, you're, it's not you're not your primary car. Right. People tell us all the time, yeah, my car was unreliable. I love it. Right. Like, okay, that's cool. Well, uh, I, I think we're gonna we're gonna table that because we have a <laughs> bunch of questions we got to get to. Oh, I want to give oh, one more one more thing. More. Wait, it's all it makes a difference who you are. No, I want to <laughs> add this thing because I think it's important. It makes a difference who you are and where you drive. True. If I know I have an unreliable car and I'm in town and I'm just dropping off and doing what I need to do and I'm close by. I may be okay with that. Right. If I'm on an a you know, 50 mile commute to work every day and I'm on the side of the highway, or for moms, if I'm driving around with my kids and now mm -hmm. it means I'm on the side of the highway with them, yep. that's a difference. It's so very true. It's so very you, true. you like Jake says, it gives you the data to balance your scales. And if you have a te if you're buying a car and right. holding it for 10 years, you know, buy something that's reliable because right. it, it that issue, you avoid that issue. I mean, it's, it's a safety issue too, quite yes. honestly. Yes. So I mean, sometimes I mean, look. Go back it, to my triangle. Well, yeah. cool. <laughs> no, I'm I'm sold now. But it's like you know, you look at it. It's like maybe you're better off with that, you know, the Camry rather than yeah. the Volvo. Right. If you're worried about safety, because you know what, you want to make sure you right. get home. Yeah. Right. Yep. You don't want to have an engine failure yes. in the middle of the road or something like that. Right. So. Okay, you can talk. You now. can go <laughs> now. No. Okay, yeah, now no. now he's good. Now, <laughs> so look, go to consumerreports.org, take a look at what we have. If you want to become a member, you'll get a lot more information when you join consumerreports.org. We're going to move right now to questions because it's a whole, it, you know, we're going to just jump to questions because a lot of questions come in after Talking Cards, each episode's uh, broadcast. Um, the first one is from Daniel H. And he mm -hmm. asks, I'm looking for a used vehicle that has room for two kids, can tow a motorcycle, and is reliable. Reliable. Safety and miles per gallon are important, but I know used vehicles don't have all the newest te tech, and that's a trade-off. I'm between a 2008 Toyota 4Runner with 120,000 miles for $12,000, or a 2003 Toyota Sequoia with 56,000 miles for $7,000. The Highlander has been on my list, but I haven't found the right one yet. I also like the idea of a hybrid like the Kia Niro, and have considered a truck or minivan. I do, I do a mix of city and highway driving, and take a 2,000-mile road trip once a year. Do you have any suggestions I may have overlooked? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. The answer is yes, there's, Daniel. There's a couple, you know. Yeah. So, so I was looking a lot of miles on the cars he looking at, kind of older vehicles, the mm -hmm. cars he was looking at. So I, I got the impression that maybe the 2,000-mile the road trip he needed some room, that an SUV might have been important. I don't think the SUVs needed to tow the motorcycle. I think there's a lot smaller yeah, cars yeah. that would still have the towing capacity for a trailer and a motorcycle. I, I just want to throw that out. But I added a Kia Sorento. I think it's a car that's often overlooked. Get a newer version, less miles, of the pretty reliable Kia Sorento. Still right. have your third row or the room you need for this trip, but get a much newer one for maybe less miles, same I, I know comparable he, money. I know his opinion, I'm gonna jump in first. Okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Everyone knows. We know your opinion, opinion yeah. right. Um, <laughs> two, two kids, why do you need a third row? You know, some of these, I mean, the Toyota 4 doesn't have it, but a Sequoia, I mean, my goodness, right. that thing is, it's almost got four rows in it. Um, so I would look at, if he finds a Highlander that, that didn't have Right, the, he know, said the Highlander, right, yep. Um, the Kia Sorento is a great choice. Again, look for one where it had the, when the years were optional, so yep. third row, and, and get one without that. Um, I think it's great with the sedans, with the Nero, I don't know if it's going to tow enough. You know, right. it may be too little of a tow rating for that. Um, you know, that, that's what I'd say. I mean, a minivan would be an awesome choice because yes. it's super <laughs> flexible for families. I didn't see minivan here. And, and it... <laughs> No, no, he's considering a truck or a minivan. So oh, okay. Say, We're you know, all over yeah. the place. You know, consider that because look, yeah, they can tow. They can tow enough for for that right. trailer. Uh, and, I, 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 I think a Miata would be a good way to go. No, um, E30 M3. Stop. BMW, that's no, always but, the answer. But again, I, I mean, Forerunner. I mean, we're, we're talking overkill. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, unless it's a 5,000 pound motorcycle, which I don't know exists. I mean, honestly, uh, there's a lot of small SUVs that are going to be able to tow right. enough. Enough. Yeah. That and you're going to be just fine. It's going to be safe, um, and it's going to be much 
much better for that road trip. And when he's driving it without the towing, you're going to get much better mileage. Absolutely. That Sequoia is, what, yeah, 13 that's a miles big, per gallon about big, best? Big yeah. And yeah. it's older. That's My overkill. point, too, on the third row, just to elaborate on the third row. My point is, if he's getting it for the cargo space yeah. for this trip or whatever, a lot of times I would say, why not the third row? If you, you might need it. It's if a you're getting longer, the space it's a anyway. Longer of Eagle. That's true, just, yeah. true. All right, so Daniel. <laughs> Go with a minivan, a Miata, or a Kia Sorento. A, a e30, three, three row. Three <laughs> row is great. <laughs> um, finally, we have John G. And he's saying, hey, guys and gal. So he, Thanks, knew, he knew our lineup today in advance. <laughs> nice. Love hey, your podcast. I'm looking to replace my 2007 Toyota Camry a hybrid that has gone to my niece, who's just started to drive Camry hybrid. Okay. I'd also like to buy a used car for under $20,000. So far, I've looked at the Lexus ES300H, the Honda Accord Hybrid, and the Toyota Corolla. Don't tell anyone, but my favorite car to drive was my 2007 Corolla LE that I bought cheap. It was quick, nimble, and indestructible. I've considered the Koreans, but don't like the looks. I also drove an Audi A3 and was excellent, but I'm afraid of the reliability. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks. First off, John, don't worry. We're just keeping it amongst ourselves and our, and our <laughs> audience. Tell anyone. So no one will know, <laughs> no okay? One will know. Um, Jake, I want to hear yours first. Oh, get the Corolla. Get a new Corolla. I get mean, it's, it's, That's it's what I fuel have. efficient. And you, you, look, you get the sedan. If you're concerned about reliability, this is a car that's been around for a while. Yep. It, it drives well. It's he even said it. It's, it's indestructible. It's indestructible. Yep. I mean, it's in its final year. You could probably get it for a song right now because they came out with the new Corolla hatchback. Oh, I was going right. to say but they Corolla haven't, hatch. But, they ha but that's, that's first year. Right. Although uh, with Toyota, maybe you take a chance with it. But... I mean, if you like the normal Corolla, yeah, yeah, wow, that's going to be Just completely indestructible. Yep. Um, and new, and fuel efficient, and new, and, new and covered for by 20, warranty. 000. Yeah, yeah, yep. I would agree. I know we sometimes dissent, but I would agree. Oh. New Corolla, yep. Oh, gosh, and I do like the hatchback, and I would probably take the take the leap of faith in the Corolla mm -hmm. for the hatchback. You know, I know he was looking at used cars, but since we've talked new, there's one that we just got in that again haven't tested it. Obviously, it's a brand new car, <laughs> but it fits right at his $20,000 ceiling. That new Kia Forte is a really nice car. Oh, yeah. yep. You know, it's a lot of car for $20,000. Mm -hmm. Now, again, wait for our testing. You may want to wait because it's a first year car, okay. but that's pretty darn impressive. Yep. 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 Just goes to show you. Just goes to show you. You don't have yeah. to get big. You don't have to get big, and you can find some new cars in a good price range. Yep. Well, and also for, for people who haven't bought a car for a while, you'll find out the small cars today are pretty much the size of a mid-sized car. Oh, yeah, exactly. Ten years from ago. Ten years ago or even five years ago, yeah. And yeah. let me add, all that safety to it, all standard. All yeah. standard. New Corolla. Corolla. Yeah, yep. Well, and, and... Yep. You hit it. You, you, you put it right there. Corolla, I think, is the best answer. Yep. Well, on that note, we're going to wrap up the show. If you want to send us a question like these people, send it to talkingcars at iCloud.com. Also, if you want to read about everything we discussed, check the show notes. Finally, we want you to become members of Consumer Reports so you can contribute to the reliability survey. So go to CR.org and sign up and join us. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.